Welcome to a very late in the week pet pairing. Um, I was planning on filming already several times throughout this past week and just all sorts of circumstances aligned to stand in my way. But finally I'm here and not only am I here, but I have a bunch of new products to show you. I've actually bought new makeup. I still have no idea what I think about my new purchases because obviously I haven't really used them that much. I'm going to start with my makeup so that we're not here for 500 days. I'm going to take my Inglot eyeshadow primer. I love this eyeshadow primer, FYI. I think I actually at this point like it more than I used to like my MAC primer because it is just so consistent and reliable. So the first item that I'm going to show you today is this Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. This and the um, other two items that I'm going to show you in a little bit for my under eyes were all a definitely Martina Lily made me buy it um, because this was kind of like a spontaneous purchase. I had absolutely no desire, plan or intention of purchasing a new brow product because I've been very faithful to the L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper since 2000. 17 or 18 when I first discovered it because as you can tell already my brows are like pretty full dark and like The the hairs of my brows are quite thick So I don't really have to do that much with my brows, which I don't anymore for years Which is why I've been relying on this sort of like brow mascara. I think this is an outstanding product. Honestly, it is um, You can always get it on sale somewhere. It has a really nice little spoolie and the product has a little bit of a tint to it. It holds your brows for a certain amount of hours, depending on how unruly your brows are. My brows have, like I said, this like very thick, coarse hair, so um, almost nothing can hold them in place for a very long period of time. But this was doing the job just fine. And honestly, I wasn't planning on straying uh, from it. But then she mentioned this laminating brow wax and she put it on and her brows just had this beautiful laminated effect and she said that the product also stays really well throughout the day. So, I bought it. This doesn't have any sort of uh, tint to it. It is basically, you know, a little wax that you comb through your brows. So that's what I've been doing. I haven't been applying any like extra product. I've just been sort of like trying to get that laminated brow effect. I don't necessarily miss the extra tint of the L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper. And I do enjoy the fact that this Too Faced product does in fact like achieve that laminated effect um, quite easy and it holds the brows in place for quite a while. Yesterday I was out uh, for work and then I went out for dinner with a friend so I was back at home quite late in the evening and by that time my brows had given up on being laminated but honestly with how thick coarse and unruly my brows are I don't expect anything to you know do miracles so for me just the fact that this holds up um, for like most of the day is already quite an achievement. So I've actually quite uh, enjoyed this so far. Now let's move on to the products uh, for the under eyes. As you guys know, I've been trying to pan my uh, beloved First Aid Beauty Bendy Avocado Concealer. And because I don't want to be in a situation where this is finished and I have no alternative, I decided to already, you know, be on the lookout for products that other people with like similar issues for their under eyes as me recommend and there's no one better for me personally at this point than uh, Martina because Martina also suffers from like somewhat darker circles, drier skin under the eyes and she has tried like a crap ton of concealers and I could just sort of like ride on her experience. So there are two products that stuck with me that she recommended. The first one was this product from Charlotte Tilbury which is sort of like a peach colored, like a peachy salmony colored corrector. This is uh, the shade Light. In fact, it reminds me a little bit of the Skin Food Salmon Skin Concealer that I used to use in the past, but uh, the Salmon Skin Concealer was, I think, a slightly deeper shade compared to this, and it was somehow more emollient and, like, oilier in a way. So this has a bit of, like, slip to it, but once you apply it under the eyes, and you're going to see that in a second, I'm going to zoom you in, actually, so that you have a better view of my under eyes. Uh, whilst you apply this, it does it. 
it's not necessarily very shiny and hydrating but it is also not drying and it does a pretty decent job at covering like blue under eye circles so today i'm going to forgo my favorite step which is my glow uh, last uh, by Auric, which I usually apply to like brighten up and hydrate my under eyes. So I'm immediately going to go in uh, with the corrector. At some point I would like to do a comparison between the Auric Glow Lust and this, just in terms of the texture underneath my eyes, whether one looks more hydrated than the other. But for now I'm just kind of going to dip my finger in this product, which looks like this. And then I'm going to stamp it into my under eye area but I'm not going to apply too much because I still want to apply corrector uh, I still want to apply concealer over top of this so I just need this to slightly correct and hide the uh, deeper bluish tints underneath my eyes and then I'm going to buff that in using my mini what is this one called again my mini base from Sonia G which is my favorite brush to apply these kind of products with so i don't know whether you can see it's not necessarily that it really hydrates my under eyes um, i would have maybe preferred it to be a little bit oilier and a bit more like illuminating but that's not the point of this product okay it's meant to be a corrector which i think it does a pretty good job at um, like I said, I'm not going to apply more because I'm also going to put concealer over top of that. I want to keep the layers of product like not too thick, but uh, th this looks very skin-like. It's not drying out my eyes. It has done, I think, a decent job at correcting a little bit the um, darkness that's going on underneath my eyes. And now I'm going to apply the concealer. And here we have a bit of an issue. So I bought the Huda Faux Filter Concealer based off, again, Martina's recommendation. Uh, she's been raving about this concealer and not only has she been raving about this concealer, but Charlotte Holtcroft has also been raving about it. However, I've never purchased uh, any sort of like base products from Huda before, so I have no idea what shade I am. Uh, I purchased mine, by the way, off of Cult Beauty, as I did the other two products, the Too Faced product and the uh, Charlotte Tilbury corrector. I bought both of them off of Cult Beauty and I just googled a uh, Cult Beauty discount code and I was able to purchase everything with 22% off. So I purchased the Huda concealer and I bought it in the shade 2-1-N Meringue which unfortunately is way 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 too light for me. Um, it's the type of concealer where I was going for like a old school 2016 like bright under eye you know situation it would probably be suited for that but for what i'm going for which is like a more natural like everything blending together kind of look it unfortunately doesn't work the fortunate part is i already used this uh twice underneath my eyes so i have thoughts about the consistency and the finish of this so in my opinion the finish of this concealer is extremely similar to the finish of the lancome tainted all so both of them have this um, soft focus matte finish underneath the eyes. One which is not overly drying, but is also not overly hydrating. So you're going to see a little bit of blurring underneath your eyes. Um, you're not going to see like uh, illumination of any sort, but you are also not going to end up with like shriveled under eyes, which a lot of other concealers tend to do with me. So because the two formulas are, in my opinion, so comparable to each other, and the issue that, that I had with this concealer is that even though it is in the shade 01, it is too dark for me to wear in the winter. I can only really wear this in the summer if I have a tan. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is actually mixing the two, since the formulas are so comparable to each other. Uh, one thing I will mention about the Huda concealer, I'm not crazy about the packaging and the doe foot of this. This has a very like strange shape of the doe foot um, and I'm, I, something about it is really not my favorite. So I'm going to put a little dot of that here. It is quite full coverage. As you can see, this is made for far more transparent people than I am. Um, and then I'm going to try to apply the absolute lightest bit of the Lancome concealer, but I'm going to actually apply first a little bit of that here on the back of my hand, like this, and then just mix a tiny bit using my finger with the um, concealer from Huda. 
because I find both of these concealers to be relatively full coverage like uh, even just such a tiny bit is more than enough for me because I'm not looking for like super full coverage effect concealer I'm just looking for something which is going to sort of uh, homogenize all the different colors that are going on on my face I feel like in terms of color this is now working much better for me yesterday when I only used the Huda concealer it was just way too bright and way too, too like white and you could like see a little bit of like um, the lines between my foundation and the concealer because the shades were just so discordant is that a word I can use here? I don't know well, you know what I mean. So I'm much happier with the uh, color now and as you can see um, my under eyes are not looking mega hydrated, they're not also looking like super dried out so as far as I'm concerned this is a pretty decent um, concealer. With that said, because I bought it in the wrong shade and I have to mix it with another concealer, it, that is rather unfortunate, but that is my fault. I don't know what you guys think, um, I think in the grand scheme of things this will do once um, I run out of this, but if I have to be completely honest with you, I just prefer the texture of this on my under eyes a little bit more. It is definitely not as full coverage, so if full coverage is what you're looking for, then this is not the type of product that will provide that. But I was always looking more for hydration and a little bit of coverage rather than a lot of coverage. So I personally still prefer the Bendy Avocado Concealer. But since that one doesn't really exist anymore and I have not been able to find anything else that performs quite like it, uh, unfortunately the Huda and the Lancome concealers are going to have to do as an alternative that at least doesn't shrivel my under eyes. I'm going to use my NARS Light Reflecting Foundation today. I have mine in the shade Deauville. I'm going to experiment with a variety of different combinations underneath my eyes now that I have all of these different products. I'm going to try the corrector with the uh, Auric Glow Lust, the Auric Glow Lust with only the concealer, you know, and I'm just going to see what ends up working the most optimally for me. But my under eyes remain difficult and while I think the Huda concealer is fine, in my personal opinion, it's really not much more magical than the Lancome Tainted All. So depending on availability and shades and stuff like that, it might be easier for you to get one over the other. But I think as far as their finish is concerned, on my personal under eyes, they perform quite similarly. When it comes to base products, I'm someone who really needs to take their time to decide how they feel about something. So right now I want to withhold from making any sort of like final conclusions. I think the brow wax is the one that's the easiest for me to comment right now. I really like that one. The uh, under eye products, I am going to come back and tell you how they've ended up working for me. I'm going to set my foundation with my uh, Gucci powder. Oh, and FYI, because I don't think I'm going to really talk about them extensively in this video, I made another like spontaneous slash not really spontaneous because I've been thinking about it for a while purchase and that is um, I purchased a bunch of lip liners from Lisa Eldridge and I've always been pretty adamant about not buying expensive lip liners because the ones that you can find at the drugstore are pretty decent. And I've stood by that and I still stand by it depending on, you know, how often you use lip liner and what you want from your lip liners. Um, if you're someone who doesn't use lip liners on the very regular, then honestly there's no point purchasing such expensive lip liners. But I am someone who actually uses lip liners pretty much every time they do their makeup. Let me decide what bronzer I'm using. Okay, I'm going to take my Milk Makeup Bronzer in the shade Baked. So I decided to purchase the Lisa Eldridge uh, lip liners because I did a little bit of a cleanup of both of my lip liners and my eyeliners to have a better overview and to just decide what I want to keep and what I want to toss. Some of my lip liners were absolutely ancient and um, I've basically mostly been using lip liners from Essence and Catrice which are really decent quality, they come in a variety of different beautiful colors, they are like an euro or at least at the time I was buying them, buying them they were maybe even under one euro but the thing is I rely on lip liners um, to outline my lips because I have mostly non-existent lip lines and I also rely on lip liners to keep 
creamier type products within the boundaries of my lip lines because a lot of lipsticks, creamier type of products, lip glosses will start to bleed um, around my lip lines. So I, I was actually looking for something that has a little bit more of like smudge proof quality to it and I was very happy as soon as I swatched the Lisa Eldridge lip liners at least in terms of like smudge proof quality was pretty immediate. Um, all of my like cheaper lip liners I could smudge around all I want but the ones from Lisa once they set they did not budge like even under the shower at least the swatches on my hand stayed so so far so good I have used one of them already yesterday the shades that I purchased by the way were uh, sorcery decade ribbon and cinnabar and I uh, wore Sorcery yesterday and obviously I wore it together with the lipstick although you don't have to wear it together with the lipstick actually I had the impression that the I'm taking by the way a nude Venus from Pat McGrath I actually had the impression that the Sorcery lip liner worked better with a fair the velvet lipstick in a fair than it did with Sorcery the lipstick I felt like it was a little bit lighter in tone and warmer in tone compared to the lipstick but okay it works together it's fine and I can't wait to test a ribbon and decade because especially with colors like ribbon and decade you really want something that will keep the lipstick within the lip lines so after that I went on and purchased a couple of more lip liners so basically I've gone on a spree to substitute all of my like cheaper ancient lip liners for the more expensive hopefully better quality uh, Lisa Eldridge versions because when you use something this often and you really rely on a product like that I think it is worth the investment at least it is worth the investment to me for highlighter, let's dip into the beautiful Divine Rose highlighter. I really love this highlighter, but because of that like slightly cooler pink tone to the base, I end up using it far less often than I would prefer to because I do actually really like the texture of this highlighter. I'm just always confused by that slightly like deeper cooler toned pink undertone of the base color that just doesn't go with a lot of types of looks that I do so let's go for this highlighter today I'm going to set all the powders on my face with a little bit of fix plus here on my sponge okay for the eye look today I am going to be taking out my beloved Divine Rose 2 palette which I don't think you've seen in a pet pairing video in a really long time mostly because I tend to use this palette a little bit more heavily in the summer than I do in the winter I gravitate towards other tones in the winter anyway for today's look I am going to primarily actually rely on the Divine Rose 2 palette and there's going to be like a little guest star appearance from the Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. I'm going to take this shade through my crease, this one through my outer corner, then I'm going to apply a little bit of Eleganza here all over my lids and then probably do something champagne-y on the uh, inner corners. Actually I might even use the shade from Voyeuristic Vixen in my inner corners because this one has a like peachy pink flip that is just a little too deep to really act as an inner corner highlight for me. And then over top of Eleganza I'd like to experiment and see what happens if I put a little bit of rose fire nectar here. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to go into the beautiful peach nude shade that I can't recall the name of and just... Ooh, I totally forgot how pigmented this shade is. So if you'll excuse me I need to remove a bunch of that from my brush here and then go back and blend it. This is quite much more, you know, vibrant than I remember it being. Probably because I haven't really used it in a while. Anyway, don't make my mistake and just like go and swirl your brush in there. You have to go in small increments. So, let's talk about a really, really fun show that I just finished watching a couple of days ago. I'm still watching The Last of Us, by the way. I'm following the episodes uh, one at a time because obviously they're not all released um, but in the meantime a friend of mine at work recommended The Outsider on HBO Max and The Outsider is based on a Stephen King novel I haven't read the novel I enjoy Stephen King but I've never really been hardcore into reading his novels I don't know why because I think I would enjoy them anyway 
Uh, she recommended the TV show, so I went and watched it. And oh my gosh, was this one of the most like creeps under your skin, makes you have this like feeling of anxiety. It's like so unsettling. It is so well done. And it's not because the story of the show is really mind blowing and original. We've seen similar stories to this quite a few times. Um, I can immediately think of that movie with Denzel Washington, Fallen, which has a very like similar story to it, a very similar vibe, and sort of a similar ending, not to spoil the ending of the TV show, but you know, they're still different, okay, they're still different, it's still worth watching the show, but the show is just so well done in terms of like the atmosphere and the um, way that they've just managed to create this story that really like nestles deep under your skin. Like every single episode I watched and I watched several at a time uh, and I watched the whole thing in like three evenings because it's only 10 episodes. I just had this like feeling in my stomach, you know, when you have a little bit of anxiety and you feel this like little ball of like churning in your stomach, that's a little bit what was happening. And I mentioned that to my friend and she said that it made her feel the same way. So it really isn't unique to me, this experience. So if you've watched the show, I'm very curious what you thought about it. I thought it was just so well done. It was also very funny because um, it stars Jason Bateman and he uh, directed the first two episodes. And ironically, right before I watched this show, I watched again on TV Horrible Bosses. I'm going to take the uh, deep purple, purpley shade now from Divine Rose 2 to apply in my outer corner. And the um, two characters that he plays are so very different from each other that it caused a little bit of like a brain fart in my brain. I was like, oh, Jason Bateman, not in a comedic role. And I know that he's not necessarily a comedic actor. I know that he's been on Ozark and Ozark is definitely not a comedy. Uh, I tried watching Ozark and I think I even mentioned it a couple of months ago when I started watching it and I watched like one or two episodes, but I didn't really get into Ozark. It was maybe a little bit too dark and too too dark of a story with again a bunch of characters that there was really no one to root for. So I never really followed up on Ozark so I don't really uh, have much experience watching Jason Bateman in that role. I've mostly seen him in comedic roles like I think he was in Office Christmas Party, right? Was he in Office Christmas Party? And then I watched him in Horrible Bosses. So it was a bit of a change of gear to see him in The Outsider. But if you like, like, horror... I wouldn't necessarily even say that um, um, The Outsider had true horror in it. Like, in at no point do you see anything scary or disturbing. It's more of, like, the way the story is told that implies a lot of things that makes you feel that way, which I love. I absolutely love shows, like especially horror shows, where they don't actually rely on um, visuals to make you experience this fe this feeling of like unsettlement and fear, but it's really all about how they tell the story. I'm going to take the tiniest bit of glitter glue. And I think I've mentioned this show before, but um, it's, not, it's not as much a horror as much as it is uh, like a murder mystery. And if you're a fan of Kate Winslet as well, you should definitely watch The Mayor of East Town, which was also on HBO. And my friend actually recommended also to watch uh, True Detective. And I have seen the first season of True Detective. I really loved it. I'm going into Eleganza right now, by the way. But then season two reveals... Re reveal. But then season two received such horrendous, like abysmal reviews that we never dared to watch it. And I just kind of like lost track of how many seasons they've made. But she actually recommended season three. She said, don't watch season two, just go for season three. So now I'm excited to start watching season three because it's always good to have something to continue watching after a really good show has finished. You know that feeling when you finished watching like a really good movie or a uh, you have finished reading a really good book and you're like, ah, oh, damn, I'm so sad that it's finished now. I, I had a little bit of that feeling after The Outsider. Also, by the way, Cynthia Erivo, uh, who is in The Outsider and I've never actually seen her in anything besides singing, I think, was outstanding in her role. She plays a sort of like this savant somewhere on the autism specter um, private investigator and she was phenomenal. 
And if I'm not mistaken, season 3 of The Mandalorian, also starring my new favorite, Pedro Pascal, has come out. So I'm actually very excited to start watching that as well. I'm going to go into the Voristic Vixen quad. This is the Lunar New Year one. I also have the older one, doesn't really matter, because for the two shades that we're going to use uh, today, the two quads are pretty much identical. So I'm going to take this one in my inner corner and I'm going to play a little bit of this one uh, over top of Eleganza to see what happens. And I'm going to start with Rosefire Nectar over Eleganza because I'm just dying of curiosity. That is pretty. You retain like the purpley base, but you also have a little bit of that flash of like golden green and those peachy pink coppery red sparkles. Rosefire Nectar is a very versatile shade. Going into the champagne shade now, I'm just going to pop a little bit of that here onto my inner corners. Alright, I'm back sans lipstick because I want to apply the lipstick together with you. Now, one of my friends at work was extremely sweet and generous and she let me borrow Velvet Pompadour and Velvet Rain to try because I've been eyeballing especially Velvet Rain for the longest time. Uh, Velvet Pompadour is not a very unique shade in my experience. Um, it's like this slightly reddish tinged um, pink shade, like a vibrant pink shade. It's not the type of shade that I wear a lot. It's beautiful, it's flattering, and I have nothing against the actual shade. It's just that from my personal experience, I just don't tend to wear shades like Pompadour uh, very often. And I can just show you the shade in case you were curious very quickly. So this is Pompadour. I can also give it a little swatch for you right here. It is a beautiful shade, especially if you don't like to wear really like vibrant pinks. This is beautiful because it has a bit of like that rosy reddish tones to it. But I was far more intrigued by the shade Rain, which is also the one that I'm going to apply for you right now. I don't really have a good matching lip liner, so I applied something that is like sort of the same. And I did purchase the matching lip liner and I realize now in the viewfinder that you're probably thinking well these shades are almost exactly the same but I think there's a little bit of like mutedness and a bit of a balance here between a variety of different tones like a rosy red like a little bit of like a hint of brown maybe I don't know I just find this lipstick to be so incredibly special let me apply it so that you can see it oh I actually matched the lip liner quite well Um, what I find so unique about this shade is that it's a pink without being one of those like vibrant pinks that I tend to not really wear that much. Like Pompadour, for example, is a much brighter pink and while I enjoy how it looks on me, I know that I'm never, almost never going to use it. But there is something about the like mutedness and like the slightly more desaturated pink that this rain shade has that just has me... All sorts of in love. I just think this is such a unique lipstick. I have never had anything quite like Rain. I'm curious what you guys think about the lipstick, about the uh, eyeshadow look, about all the new products that I tested. Do let me know in the comment section all of your thoughts, feelings, hopes and dreams. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!